Okay, now we're going to show you how to manage a tension pneumothorax. Um, okay, hi everyone. So, um, well, regarding tension pneumothorax, um, so we're concerned that this um, injury that we've identified on the patient's chest is resulting in this positive pressure building up around the lung, which is causing the lung to collapse. And it's likely um, resulting in the patient showing signs of obstructive shock, I guess, um, meaning that blood flow back to the heart through the, uh, the great veins is becoming impeded by this positive pressure in the chest. So to um, improve the patient's breathing, but also cardiac output, we're going to need to decompress the chest. Um, we've identified that the injury and the positive pressure is on the right side of this patient's chest. And we're going to have a look. The patient will be probably taking rapid, shallow breaths, not be able to um, breathe very deeply. And this right side maybe is likely to be moving less. It will have reduced air entry and it's possible that there'll be hyperresonance if you are percussing and listening to the difference. If the patient's having tension pneumothorax and they're awake, they're likely to be highly distressed with what's happening to them. So the thoracostomy we're going to perform allows, um, is essentially a surgical incision which allows decompression of that pneumothorax. I'm going to show you the landmarks to start with. So I'm going to make an incision into what we call uh, a safe triangle in the patient's right axilla and I'm going to do it in the, in the fourth or fifth intercostal space and to find that intercostal space I'm going to come here to where the sternum and manubrium meet at the angle of Louis and I'm across from that I'm going to find the second rib underneath that will be the second intercostal space so I'm going to work down doing the third rib the fourth rib and then underneath that the fourth intercostal space I'm going to follow it around until I'm in the midline of the axilla and I'm going to make my incision just anterior to the mid axillary line so just up ever so slightly from that and that's going to be in what we call the safe triangle so bordered by the pec muscle here latissimus dorsi underneath and we're going to just be mindful and have a quick think about where we're inserting does it look right am I going to be in the chest here and yeah I think that looks like an appropriate place to make my incision so we're going to go around onto the uh, patient's other side of his chest because that's where we're able to demonstrate how you make the incision. So I'd ideally have some sterile gloves on, I'd expose the chest and I'd move the patients up arm and out the way and ideally if I had them I'd use some local anaesthetic or sedation for the patient uh, because the procedure is involves the incision and it's likely to be painful. Firstly, I'll um, use something to clean the area and I'll make a thorough clean, widening away and I'll discard that. So I've already described how I'd identify my landmarks, uh, but I'll just sense check and make sure that's right. And with the incision, I'm looking to go just over the fifth rib. And that's because underneath the ribs run the neurovascular bundles. So by going just on the top of the rib, I know that I'm in a safe place. I'm going to get my scalpel and I'm going to make two to three centimetre incision along the top of the rib and that's quite a, a firm positive incision where you're cutting down not through but to the depth of the muscle layer. So you're not looking to cut down through the muscles themselves. So that's through the skin and soft tissues into the muscles. And, th and don't worry that that will bleed a bit. That's to be expected yeah. as a skin cut. Yeah, that is true. Okay, and then I'm going to use the Spencer Wells forceps to then insert, and I'm looking to push apart, like squeezing like that, the muscles to get down to the pleura. And I'm going in and I'm trying to strip apart and push apart the muscles to make a tract down into the chest cavity. Pushing, pushing, pushing. And I'm going to keep the tips closed as I work downward, but I then occasionally just opening a bit to spread my tract. So spreading, spreading. 
and once I get what I feel like through the muscles and over the, I feel go over the top of the rib, I'll then positively push it through, but controlling it so I don't go in too deep, I'll pop into the chest wall. But I've got my left hand there giving me stability and preventing me from slipping too far deep into the chest. So pop, great, I've gone through. I'm now gonna use the closed, I guess, um, front of this instrument just to work up and down, trying to strip away some of the muscle from the rib to increase the space that I've got. And I'll open them slightly as I withdraw, just to, again, keep that tract open. I'll place the uh, Spencer Wells there. I'll then use my finger, which is sterile, to go into the thoracostomy and to sweep around. And that just allows me to confirm the tract is certainly into the chest wall. And this will allow me to assess whether the lung is up or down. As I've already popped through the chest, it may be that that results in a big air release, uh, which would indicate that there was indeed a tension pneumothorax, or possibly a gush of blood.